Yo. How's it going? Going good. <laughs> you always have the coolest clothes on. I don't know. Some people call it, uh, my wife don't like it. She's like, you just look like a country bum. <laughs> but that's cool, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I try to be cool. Bro, who do, I don't know anybody who does as many things as you do from coffee business to <laughs> gun gators to just shooting rifles out in the woods all by yourself. Right. <laughs> You're just driving around, building Jeeps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Writing books. Yeah. Preaching, teaching on prayer. Bro, I don't literally you're like a jack of every trade. Yeah. I've you've I've always heard that, you know, jack of all trades but a master of none. Yeah. But I tend to think that I'm a jack of all trades and I'm good at all of them. <laughs> you're a master of all. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that that inspires you to like get into something and it seems like this cuz I remember years back you knew something about cameras. But then you're like you caught the bug. Yeah. And now you know everything about cameras. Like, what is it? I dive headfirst in everything that I do. <laughs> and so I get really good until I get bored. Yeah. And if I get bored, I'll do something that I I just try to make it where I'm not bored anymore. Um, but I've always hated relying on people to do things that I want to do. And so even when it comes to building Jeeps, I'm glad that there are mechanics out there that can build them. I'm glad that there are mechanics out there that can work on the engine. I just don't want people doing it for me. And I don't want to pay people to do it, really. Because I'm like, I should be able to do this by myself. I shouldn't have to pay anybody to, you know, work on my Jeep. And so I'll figure it out. And now there's times that I miss it completely, you know, like some of these prophets out here. <laughs> oh, man. They just miss it. But I'm like, I guess I should have took it to a mechanic, you know, because I'll get in elbow deep, and now I'm like, well, i got to figure it out now because I'm completely totaled. <laughs> so you you find an interest, yeah, and you follow that interest. Yeah. And do you find that when you're enjoying or, like, drinking in the interest of this thing, that that's where the knowledge grows? I think so. Yeah, I think the more you enjoy something, the more you want to learn about it, you know, and that can go through – anything whether it's a hobby if you enjoy shooting guns yeah you don't want to get out there shoot a gun and then you're like man this is really bad i can't even hit the target it makes you want to go out and shoot the gun more right and get better at your aiming it same thing with hunting you know the when you miss the shot when you're out hunting you're like well dang it you know, now I've got to do it again and redeem myself. <laughs> Wait, he's the shot? Like, yeah. So you sometimes you only get one shot? Sometimes you, yeah, because if, say, you're shooting at a deer and it's standing there and it's perfect, you're like, this is it. And you're either one shooting with an arrow or a gun and you miss. Well, that deer's freaked out and it takes <laughs> off running. Oh and if you're in a tree stand, oh, well, can't do anything. If you're on the ground, you're not going to run after it because it's faster than you. <laughs> So how, what's the longest you've ever waited to see a deer? I've sat in a deer stand for not like 24 or 48 hours straight, but like two or three consecutive days I've gone out waiting on a deer, knowing <laughs> that this deer is going to be here, and it should be here, and then it doesn't happen. So I go back the next day. I'm like, this is the trail. Wait, wait. So how, how long is a day of waiting? I don't know. I've been in a stand for like six hours. Dear Lord, what are you doing in there? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Looking at trees, <laughs> birds landing, you know, squirrels are chirping in your ear, making fun of you. Oh my gosh, do you ever like get to read? I have been. So sometimes now that we have phones and everything, I'll yeah. take my phone and I'll read, you know, I'll read scripture, I'll read a book, I'll yeah. scroll Instagram or something while I'm hunting, so... I don't know if that makes me less of a hunter. <laughs> okay, so let's say there's somebody watching, and they're like, I don't have any inspiration for anything. I just feel slothful, not just with the Lord, but about life itself. What kind of advice would you give to them? Because every time I'm around you, you're always inspired about something, both in the Lord, something's that something's caught your interest, and you're diving into it in the Scriptures, in the person of the Lord, but then also in just natural life, hobbies, right. enjoyments. Like, talk to me. Um, I don't know if I feel like if someone is like 
has no ambition. Mm -hmm. I feel, I would say, I don't, I don't know, it's tough because me, I'm like, if you don't have any ambition, it's because one, you're depressed or you're lazy or, and maybe that's it. Maybe that's the thing. If, if you don't have any ambition, there's somewhere in your life where you've, you're depressed about some situation. Um, cause I've, I've gotten that way before just in general. It's like as a creative person who's wanting to create, I'll get into a rut of, man, I'm just real bored in my creativity and it creates this just, and I don't feel like creating anymore cause I want to create this. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but then I, I see too, a lot of people that end up losing ambition is they put their expectations so high and they can't obtain those expectations. So for instance, people who say they start a YouTube channel and their expectation is YouTube is about to pay me some money, you know, and they put their first video up and they get three views and a thumbs down. And they're all, and they're all themselves. They're all, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's mom, brother and me, you know? And so you put up, two, three, four videos, and they just, nothing happens. They dis, they get discouraged because they've set their expectation up here. Uh -huh. Say, I'm going to be a millionaire. And they put their videos up, and they're like, mm, what am I doing? But what that should do is put you in a lot of fire under your butt to learn what it is. How do you get to your expectations? Like if you're expecting to make a million dollars on YouTube, what are you going to learn and teach yourself? Who are you going to learn from to get to that aspect? And that's the hard part. And a lot of people just don't want to learn. You know, we talked about it as earlier today where the attention span yeah. is just so quick. We're just scrolling to the next thing and we get these dopamine hits. And if we don't get satisfied with what we're wanting immediately, we're on to the next thing, you know? And I think that's where a lot of the, slothfulness comes from people don't feel like they can actually obtain what it is they want because they don't know where to start they don't know how there's nobody in their life that's like helping them and encouraging them and they're gonna get kind of get depressed you know come become a couch potato <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard that in a long time couch potato couch you potato. just dated yourself yeah so my mom used to always call me when I'm playing video games. Did she? Yeah, she's like, quit being a couch potato. <laughs> what video games did you play? I played Madden. Oh, of course. You know, all the sports games. FIFA? And I, I wasn't into soccer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much, I say all the sports games, pretty much Madden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I'd do some of the old games like Crash Bandicoot back in the day. Some of that stuff. But I was did a, you ever get into Halo? I never got into Halo. No, uh, no, I was already, I was already doing other stuff. Yeah, you know, to where I was like, all right. What about GoldenEye? I played a lot of GoldenEye. Golden Eye. <laughs> yeah, I played GoldenEye. I got the Golden Gun. Did you? Yeah, and that was it. And once you got the Golden Gun, you're just all you're over it. the place. Proximity bombs is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> No, we played hours and hours of GoldenEye, man. Yeah. Super Nintendo. Yeah, I had friends that would put up TVs all over the house, and there's wires running all through. <laughs> and everybody brings their Xbox, and they're all playing on the same game, on the same network. <laughs> and I'm like, y'all are a bunch of nerds. That's wild. Let's go skateboard, you know? It's crazy. But, bro, seriously, though, if get video games, as they are today, were like when we were uh, No, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If when we were little, it looked like it was today. Oh. I understand. Like, it gets crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. You really need to recognize that there is things vying for your attention across the board. Everything oh, yeah. is getting better and easier accessed. So it's almost like the mind, the human soul is under more pressure now than ever before. I mean, bro, when we were kids, there's no cell phones whatsoever. There's no internet. You know, so right there, that's two worlds that are, I mean, in themselves, their worlds of entertainment and their worlds of, of gratification. 
You know, then you put on top of that video games, the accessibility of movies and, and TV shows that are now seasons long. And bro, it's like we are under a subtle attack. Our attention is under a subtle attack. Absolutely. And if our attention can be taken from us with boring, mundane things or even these, I guess, superficial in mm -hmm. a way it's just where it's like sci-fi for instance you know just these wild imagination of things to where our attention's here then you know and it's pulling from all over the place there's no it's no wonder why christians are like why are we not seeing the power that we've heard from these early revivalists you know why are we not seeing these things in our life as much as we were hearing about the Smith Wigglesworths or, you know, the John Wesley's. We're hearing all this stuff. But they didn't have TV. You know, my one of my st favorite stories listening to or just reading one of the Smith Wigglesworth uh, biographies, Lest I think it was Lester Sumrall, went up and went to his house, knocked on the door, had a newspaper. And Smith Wigglesworth opened the door, and he said, you're not bringing that mess in my house because <laughs> this house is only for the word of the Lord. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know, he didn't yeah. even entertain the thought of the news in his own town. You know, he's like, the news is Christ. Yeah. Christ is the news. <laughs> <laughs> Bunk used to say the, the, the gospel is called good news because it's happening. Yeah. But uh, I remember when I was on a Smith Wigglesworth kick for a while, reading everything that I could find by him, he would never go a half hour without praying, but he, ne he never prayed more than a half hour, but he never went a half hour without praying. And he would try not to go 15 minutes without reading the word. So he kept a pocket New Testament when he was a plumber in his, in his pocket. And every 15 minutes, he'd pull out, read something from the scriptures and put it back. And then he obviously he didn't pray more than a half hour, but yeah. he never went a half hour without praying, and he used to walk down the street and sing in his heart this song, filled with God, filled with God, emptied of self and filled with God. Yeah. I never, you know, I don't know the melody, but those are the words, right. filled with God, filled with God, emptied of self and filled with God. I remember one more thing from Smith Wigglesworth. He, um, he said this quote, uh, there are a thousand parts of my heart that need to be softened a thousand times a day. Man, this is a quality of person. It's very interesting. I went to dinner with uh, Roy Harthorn. Do you know who that is? So Roy Harthorn, he was uh, the first pastor of Calvary Assembly Winter Park, Florida. He's uh, uh, He was friends with Youngie Cho, and he was Smith Wigglesworth's piano player. And I remember asking him at dinner, do you think we'll see the likes of Smith Wigglesworth again? He says, no. And I said, well, can I ask you why not? And he said exactly what you said. The amount of time that it would take to fashion a man like that is not possible with the kind of world we're in right. today. I think the scripture, is it Luke 12, where Jesus says, uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. I think it's Luke 12. Yeah, I think so. Is it? Yeah. But the, the, the wording there is crazy. Because iniquity shall abound. In other words, you're going to be inundated with Iniquity and the possibility of iniquity. Right. The whole world lies in the power of the wicked one. Because of that, the love, the affection for Jesus Christ and the love even for other people will just begin to go colder and colder. I just read a quote also from Robert Murray McShane. He said, the only cure or, uh, yeah, the only remedy, that's what it was, the only remedy for a cold heart is a look at the heart of Jesus. What do you think? No, I think it's uh, I think it's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, it's true. I mean, if if Christ is all, He's all. Yeah. You know. So it's. You know, I've always I've even thought about that myself. The the distractions that I allow just in my life, just in the pure enjoyments, you know, that I'm at liberty to enjoy right and i noticed that how some of those things if i 
take it in a in a sense of the flesh of all right, I am I'm enjoy, enjoying these things selfishly because I want to. I can tell that there's a difference than if I were to, for instance, go fishing. Mm. I'm I'm going fishing to catch fish because I need to make a YouTube episode. I can tell there's something different than when I go fish. And I fish for the glory of God. Oh wow! You know, because there's just that there's a relationship there. You're fishing and you're thinking and you're contemplating with scriptures. You're thinking on Christ. You're it's he's there because you're thinking about him. <laughs> you know, and there's this fellowship even in something like fishing or hunting mm-hmm. or working on a jeep, whatever it is. But if I'm doing it because I'm trying to obtain something from a selfish perspective, it's completely different. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah I think there's the scripture that's in Colossians that says, uh, do everything for the glory of the Lord, giving thanks to the Father through the Son, I think it is. And uh, no, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord right. Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the yeah. Father through the Son. I think it's actually... Found in Colossians three seventeen. Let me see. Colossians three seventeen. Colossians three seventeen. It would a but this would answer exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, whatever you do, do for the glory of God. Yeah, whether it's you're fishing, mm-hmm. whether you're making a YouTube video, it's almost like an inward disposition. It's almost mm-hmm. like a like a inward knowing, an awareness. Right. Uh, so it says, and in I mean, whatever you do in word. Or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, thanksgiving, gratitude, thanks to God the Father through 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 him. Yeah. That's easy there. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. There's, have you heard this book? Have you heard of this book? <clears throat> Pray like a monk, live like a fool? I have not. Mm, I haven't read it, but yeah. I keep hearing about it. Yeah. Supposedly, and I may be dead wrong about this, but what I'm gathering from what people have told me about it. Is it is trying to show you the merge between secular and sacred, um, as um, A. W. Tozer in his book *The Pursuit of God* tried to destroy right. the difference between secular, secular and sacred, right. sacralar, sacralar. <laughs> uh, secular and sacred, uh, to show that wherever you stand, you are on holy ground because the Spirit of God uh, lives in you. Right. But this "pray like a monk, live like a fool" is trying to show the ease of prayer in the midst of your your life. But since neither one of us have read it, there's nothing we can say about it. <laughs> we can only speculate. <laughs> and that's how rumors start. And that's how rumors start. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of truth to, the, to that. Say you're standing on holy ground because Christ is in you, right? That's the whole mystery of, of Christ. That's the mystery of the gospel. Paul says, I've... Here, I'm revealing you the mystery of what has been mystery for all these years. Mm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. You know, and Paul was so adamant of always saying, Don't you know that you're the dwelling place of God? Don't you know that you're the temple of God? He dwells within you. And you read scripture like that, and it is it's uplifting because one, we know the depravity of man. And it's like, well, I am without Christ. I am scum of the earth. <laughs> like I'm evil. I am putrid. You know, I am no better than a monkey throwing feces at little kids at the zoo. Okay. <laughs> but with Christ, him indwelling in me is what makes me who I am. Mm-hmm. He brings me righteousness because he is righteousness. Yeah. No, and I can live righteously because he is righteous and he lives in me. Yeah. You know, and I can be gentle because he is gentle. Mm-hmm. I can be all these things because that's the character of Christ. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. this for me, just being able to say wherever we go, he goes. Because if we really believe that he dwells within us, yeah, then and we really believe that we're the temple of God. Everywhere we go should be a meeting place yeah. for people who don't know Christ. You know? Yeah, he's not just righteousness for us. He's righteousness through us. Yeah. That's the beauty of this whole, as you said, this 
this mystery of union with him. It's, a, it's enjoyable, it's experiential, but it's also effectual. Right. It's doing something yeah. through us. Bro, I mean, I know parts of your testimony yeah. and how you were wild before. <laughs> it's, it's the, but like the Josh Kelly that is today with a residing Christ on the inside of him, he probably feels softer, more tender, mm -hmm. more compassionate as opposed to that. That Josh Kelly thought he was going to be a recording artist smoking weed all the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm still brash. <laughs> you know, there's still some, you know, there's still some uh, Josh, old Josh here, but it's calmed it's coming down. Out. It's, it's calmed coming. down. Right. You know, and, and it's not just because you got older. Right. Something took place. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I hate seeing people live like heathen mm -hmm. when they're young and then they get married and they have kids and they just settle down because of life. Right. But it's not, it doesn't mean they're righteous. Right. It doesn't mean that they're living holy. It doesn't mean that they've been transformed by the power of God. They're just starting to calm down, you know? And that's not what we're talking about with you. No. We're, we're talking about the Spirit of God entered in and gave you new desires and a clean heart. Yeah. He, uh, I was able to get self-control, you know, that's a fruit of the Spirit. And if anybody knows me prior, they know I had no self-control. I did everything for self, one, you know, and there was no control. <laughs> I was out of control. Uh, you know, and still to this day, I'm probably seen as out of control by many because I'm not the typical bubble you know, Christian that the Christian culture has tried to create like if you're a christian this is the way you dress this is the way you speak this is the way you act i'm kind of defying <laughs> defying that purposefully in a sense too you know <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious i you know there's something about being exactly who you are that in a way enables christ to completely come through you mm. in your Hugh, I, I like to say it like this. I wrote this down one time. Nothing will impede what God wants to be through you as you trying to be as he is through someone else. And I think that individuality, you know, that you're, and, and I know you said part of it's intentional, but I know what you mean. It's like you're not going to let somebody alter your personality right. or a system of thought alter your personality when you know that your re your relationship with Christ is with you as a person, right? And He made you this way. Yeah. He's glorified in you this way. I think this is part of what it means in Ephesians when it says that uh, you, we were created in Christ. We are His workmanship, created in Christ for good works. Now, I mean, think about these these three things that are said here. One, we're His workmanship, which means He's the one that's making this thing. Yeah. Created in Christ, so you have first of all, He's the one's making this, and then through the person of Jesus Christ, he created us with this good works that should emanate out of or spontaneous, spontaneously flow out of what he divinely made you to be. So it's like Josh Kelly with his gifts, with his talents, with his mind, with his bent, with his person, all of this is working together yeah. for the specific created works that God has for Josh Kelly, and no one else can fulfill those. Absolutely, and it's the same as... You know, one, either you believe that Christ made you who you are or you believe that a system made you who you are, mm. you know. And if we believe that Christ made us one way, but we're also living in a way that pleases a system creation, we're now lying to ourselves. And we know that blessing cannot flow through lies. You know, it flows through truth and truth <laughs> alone. So if we're... True to ourselves, true to who, true to who Christ has created us to be, and we're loving it. The favor of the Lord goes on it because like, this is who I created you to be. Yeah, and you're walking in the creation. Yeah, instead of walking H hence in that. the reason why people think you're out of control. Right, <laughs> Emmanuel, <laughs> come on in. No, come on in. We're just we're just shooting yeah. the breeze and and putting it on tape. Yeah. Wow, guys, sorry, I messed up. Like singing and such on it. Hold on. No, so your hair looks great, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate it. Come sit down. I went back to teenager. <laughs> Let's go. He said I went back to teenager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just kind of rigged something up real quick. Yeah, real fast. Oh, we just oh, that's got really nice. we just got these two cameras and I got the phone and the oh, wide. Super nice. You know. So, so what are we talking about, y'all? 
Oh, we were just talking about we'll whatever about happened. Turning up your mic too. Oh, we, turning up my mic. Oh, that that was a good conversation. I bet. We literally were just talking about whatever came out of our mouth. Wow, yeah. that is the best convo. We were because that's real. We were just blabbing. That's well, real. Well, the last point you probably talk about this. You probably say something really well good about this. We were just touching on how we're made with our own personal. Mm -hmm. tailor-made personalities yeah. and hearts for what God's called us to do. So if we try to let a system form us mm. and not thriving in the personality and giftings that Jesus has made us to have, Absolutely. then we can't fulfill the purpose Absolutely. of the Lord. I mean, you're a person that we both know to walk in your personality in a full degree and the power of the Spirit empowers it and makes it... Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'll tell you that there was a moment where you're trying to figure out who you are, you know, kind of like the Gideon moment, if you will, because you're trying to do something that feels like it's needed, but it's not fully who you were meant to do and meant to be. So you're filling in the gap. And then that freedom comes when the Lord really reveals to you, um, you know, your purpose and, and it gives you such a confidence boost because you're like, it's made clear now what what you're meant to be, and it it's a revelation. It's like an onion being peeled open. It's like that cabbage, right? Onion, cabbage, whatever <laughs> fruit or vegetable you want to use. But it is so empowering because now it doesn't really matter what anyone has to say, and and obviously people speak into your life. It's true, but what I'm talking about is when the enemy uses people to say negative things, like Noah, what are you doing, building a this thing, whatever you call it. It's never right? rain. It's never rain. What are you rain? what is rain? <laughs> right? It's so it, it's kind of like, and you you have this, you know, it's like your back is straight. You you walk confidently, not arrogantly, right? It's not about arrogance, it's not about pride, but it's like you're laser focused and you're like, hey, I know what I have to do. And anybody that says anything, hey, thanks guys for the effort, thanks for speaking out. But I just I know what I need to do, and so it's it's super refreshing. It's super amazing that that uh, the Lord is so faithful to uh, to, uh, or He's so awesome. He's such a powerful Elohim, Creator God, that if you think about it, He listen to this. He's omnipotent. Meaning that he everything that he's created, you look at creation, scientists are still discovering everything, right? Mm -hmm. We're still in awe when the new centipede has been discovered. Like, whoa, a new thing of centipede. This is so crazy. And it has 101 leg or 101 and a half, whatever. And the whole world is like in awe. This is the creation of God. So with all of the creation, with all of the galaxies and, and all of the things... God still remain omnipotent. He's still awesome, meaning that all of the, his whole resources has not been even tapped out. Like it's still coming, and and we have the one. He's in us, and so I just love the like. I love the fact that when the Lord does something, He says, "Emmanuel, I got so much more to do through you. I'm not done with you." And that is just so exciting because you can be done with one project or done with one thing and still look forward to so much more that the Lord has for yeah. you. But the, the confidence, and that's what I pray about, is, Lord, give me the confidence in this moment. Yes. Let my ankles not slip from where you have me walk. And then when your feet are in a solid rock, when you're walking and you know, you know that you know that you know, Man, it is such an amazing, powerful feeling. That's amazing. So that's that's uh, uh, yeah, and and that's that's the whole point is that the Lord wants us to walk in that confidence, right. and that's why He spoke to Gideon. He says, "Mighty man of valor," yeah. and that's the Gideon that's seated in heavenly places. If you would take the New Testament idea of that, that's the Gideon that God has actually created. Yeah. You know, not the Gideon that's insecure and doesn't know who he is, and he's hiding for the, from the Midianites, right. but the Gideon, the victorious man of God. Yeah, the one that would walk as an ambassador. Yeah. Walk in the authority. And remember, he was, 
it took him a while. And I think the Lord is not afraid of us asking him questions. Right. He's not afraid of us, uh, okay, well, Lord, can you confirm this? Yeah. It, the Lord doesn't get frustrated with us. I, I actually believe that uh, it, it kind of excites God mm -hmm. that we would, if you will, kind of, you know, begin to discover the possibilities. Yeah. You know, it, it excites him that we're engaging him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as you know, the story, God takes him to the enemy's camp to hear yeah. about the bread rolling down. Yeah. And after that, after that revelation, Gideon says, let's go. Right. Let's get people on. And and instead of what was it, 32,000 uh, soldiers, he gets 300 soldiers. Yeah. And he's like, let's go. <laughs> we can do this. Right. So that that that's my excitement, man. And then, I mean, as someone who owns a business, I'm the same way. I would rather someone ask me questions than to assume. Yeah. And then it's like, look, if you would just if you would ask, just ask, me, yes, we wouldn't be in this position. Exactly. You know? And it's the same way with my kids. Like, look, I, if you are unsure of what to do, like if you're if you're filling up the dishwasher and you're unsure of what soap to put in, yeah. Come ask me, because I don't want you putting in Dawn dish soap and having a big foam party Bob. in the kitchen. <laughs> you know? That's so true. Had that happen, actually. True story. I, I was that kid that did it. Yeah. My mom was like, what's going on? You know, I had these, you know, suds all in the apartment Amazing, kitchen. Yeah. But it's like, hey, if you would have just asked, yeah. I would have told you, if you're wanting to do the dishes, use this soap. That's so true. You know, it's the same thing with the Lord. Lord, what do I do here? Or if I'm I want I want to, you know, walk in your glory, I want to walk in your shadow, where do I step? Right. Mm. And if if he directs our steps, then we can ask him, where do I step next? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I well, yeah, for me, uh what, what is it? Isaiah, those that hope or wait upon the Lord. Uh and uh, he says, even the youth gets uh, weary and tired, right? And it's kind of like this thing that the Lord will take us into a higher level, uh, um, a vision, if you will, and uh, and it's it's not like it's hidden; mm -hmm. it's there for us to see. Right. And and it's it's like if we would just trust in Him, not be okay. Don't be afraid to trust Him, because a lot of times we're afraid to trust Him. I don't know if you heard that story of. Of the guy falling down the, the mountain and he grabs onto a little bush yeah. and he says, Lord, help me. <laughs> and God answers, Here I am, son. And uh uh and he the, the man goes, Lord, help me, I'm falling. And God says, Just let go of the bush, I got you. And then there's a 30-second delay, and God says, and the man says, Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> right? And so the thing is that sometimes we're just afraid to trust in God. Yeah. And so it's about um, it's about just going into that new territory, trying those things that God says, mm -hmm. and just not be afraid. Right. You know, it, it, I mean, wh what do you have to lose? You remain in mediocrity. Right. You remain the same, or you go into the new that the Lord has you. What are you afraid of? E either His promise or truth is true, or yeah. it isn't, or it isn't. Know? Yeah. And I was reading Joshua this morning, and in the just in the initial, hey, Joshua, uh, Moses is dead. You're taking over as the leader, and you're going to lead Israel into the promised land. The Lord says, be strong and be courageous. Mm -hmm. In the next three sentences, he says, be strong and be very courageous. And then he says That's it right. another time before he's finished. And then at the very end of what God is telling Joshua to do, he says, be strong and be courageous. You know, and the Lord knew this is going to be tough, mm. you know, and it's going to be scary. You're going over there into a land of giants. Yeah. Uh, you need to be strong and be courageous. Yeah. You know, he would, he said it so many times that it's like, oh, yeah. he has to mean it, you know. Yeah. And so that's that same thing of just, hey, the Lord promised this land, the land had already been given to the Israelites yes. before Joshua took leadership. Yep. And it says, take possession of what God has given. So there's a there is a promise that God has already given. 
and it's for us to be strong and courageous to take possession of that, you know? Yeah, I actually think that a lot of conflicts and fights in the Christian community happen because people aren't taking possession of the promises that God has for them. Mm -hmm. So here we are, there's a small little property and everybody's fighting over, you know, there's little square inch where the Lord has such a great territory for the people of God, you know, and you don't have to get into conflict with your brother, right? you know, just like Abraham and Lot, yo, spread out. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's right. a lot of this here. Yeah. Go ahead and and just and just expand the kingdom of God. And so uh, uh, one thing that we do every single morning is we pray for our streets, our neighborhoods, our, the cities and towns around us. Yeah. And and why? We're not just stuck on where the church is. Yeah. We're not just stuck on that. We, we understand, hey, there's so much more. And when we begin to see it, when we begin to... Uh, you know, pray over those things, then you you begin to see right. that the Lord begins to give you th that that land. He begins to give you those people to shepherd over, yeah. mm -hmm. and so never, you know, it's it's like just don't be afraid. That that word fear uh, is mentioned so many times in the Word of God right. because the Lord knows our you know makeup, and we know that He knows that sometimes we're afraid to step into the new. We're so used to the regular old <laughs> usual mm -hmm. the territory that we already discovered yeah. right and and we like the the um things that have already been uh, uh that we're used to what is that word uh you know familiar familiar, familiar. but the familiar can kill mm -hmm. the potential of the new so it's like lord i thank you for what i had yesterday i thank you for what i have received today but lord lead me on mm -hmm. you know let, let, let's go let's go jesus you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I've been reading George Mueller's biography recently. Yeah. And he said, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of faith is the end of anxiety. And he's speaking about following God's purpose for your life. Obviously, he had an orphanage. But he, he says in there, he says, if you're doing the work of God, his promise is his pledge. He, mm. he has, his promise is your pledge. So he, he's speaking about the same things that we're talking about right now, trusting God and not being afraid because you realize the greatness of God. I, 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 there's this old quote I heard in Bible college. It says, if you have a big God, you have a little devil. Yeah. But if you have a, a big devil, then you have a, a little God. I think you could say it in the same way. If you have a big God, you have little worry or, mm, or no worry. That's good. But if you have big worry, it means you have a little God. That's good. So it's, it's a perspective, perspective of who he is. It's believing who he has said. And that's why the scriptures are the source of faith. Because they tell us who God is, yeah. and they not just inform us, but by spiritual revelation, they empower us mm. to believe God. Come on. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And that's what that's what the Word of God does. It's not a, just a historical you know, right. book. And, and it, it's, it's if we receive it yeah. as truth. Yes. And when we commit our lives to that truth... Yeah. Our lives become we begin we we become transformed and we become transformation agents mm -hmm. in the community in the place that we are at. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I've never imagined like when I was a kid. You know, I was imagining to be a astronaut, a fireman, then Superman. You know, all of those. Yeah. <laughs> but I've never imagined me being who I am now. We've got to meet such extraordinary people. We've got to speak to, uh, you know, governors and just, it's wild. Immigrant from Ukraine uh, gets to do things like what I'm doing today. It's just craziness. Never imagine. But it's when you begin to trust the Lord and walk with him. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy stuff. I'm having a Holy Spirit adventure that I never imagined I would have. <laughs> and you know we're just sitting and talking with with my wife and and the way the Lord is bringing her into a place of influence that that she never imagined and just the Lord is doing he's he he's just the scripture is right he's indescribably good <laughs> and you can't like pinpoint him you you can't explain him away he's he's just so yeah. so awesome and so above our wildest imaginations <laughs> It's so true. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So here I am saying, Lord, do something new in my life today, mm -hmm. every morning. And he does. Yeah. He'll connect me with people that I never thought I would connect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, you know, driving by, driving through, and, and I'm talking to somebody. And apparently there's some, you know, some kind of politician or some kind of church leader or some kind of, or just a regular person with a deep revelation that I need. It's like mm -hmm. he's given, he's bringing that manna forth to me for, for the day, you know? And it's just being open to the Lord and saying, Lord, whatever you want to do in my life today, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm, I'm ready. Yes. Just do it. Yeah. I love it. Maybe you could pray. Yeah. For the people to adopt this, this kind of mentality. Yeah. To expect and trust in God. Yeah. It's, it's, if you remember, Caleb says to Joshua, Caleb's what, eight, 80 plus years? Mm. Caleb's 80 plus years. I mean, he's, he's senior citizen for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Even in that time. He's no 900. <laughs> but. He's not 900. 900. <laughs> and uh, so what's interesting, he comes up to Joshua and he says, Joshua, as I was 40 years ago, I'm, I'm as vigorous, I'm as excited, I'm full of energy as I was a generation ago. Mm -hmm. Man, what mm. is this, Caleb? Yeah. I want to. And Caleb looks to the mountain range and he says, Joshua, give me that mountain. Wow. There's giants there, there's the enemy mm. there. Caleb says, I got this, give it to me. And so here's the thing I'm telling you guys. If we have the attitude of boldness, if we have the attitude of courage, there is no telling. That, and, and I said this before, why do we always ask God, bring us into our destiny? No, Lord, I want to walk in my destiny today. Mm -hmm. You know, that's great. You know, tomorrow, next year, you know, God will fulfill uh, certain things. But why not begin to say, Lord, I can do it today. I want to, I desire. So I do want to pray for whoever's watching us yes, yeah. in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you for your mercy, for your grace. I thank you for your goodness that pursues us daily. And Lord of glory, I just pray that right now, whoever's watching, whoever's hearing this, Lord, that you would give them courage and boldness, Father God, to step into new territories, Lord, to begin to do things that are, uh, that are expanding your kingdom and not to be afraid Father, not to be afraid of the opinions of men, not to be afraid of what someone can do, how someone would grade them, not to be afraid of failure, Lord, because even failure can teach us and bring us into a higher level of our calling. So, Father God, right now, I pray that your glory would rest on your people. Father God, that you would expand their territories, expand their mind, their thinking, Lord of glory, that your fire will just light up their heart, Lord, and a revelation and transformation would happen in their minds. We pray this all in Jesus' glorious and mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's awesome.